Welcome to Binary Jazz, a podcast that you are listening to. <laughs> I thought you were just going to stop right there, podcast. Like, let it sit for a minute. I, I, I yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, this is a, it's a podcast where people, uh, human beings on the internet, uh, Binary Gary, uh, who's Gary in real life, uh, Jazz Sequence, who is Chris in real life, and Allison Plus, who is Allison in real life, and uh, we have this thing that we do, uh, it's been a couple of weeks, so we don't know how to do it anymore, um, and, uh, but typically what happens is there's a topic, and Gary and I try to, try to pretend like we know something about the topic and then inevitably find out that we know nothing about anything. Uh, and, and that's, that's what we do here. Gary, that's you're shaking your head. I was going to say it's, uh, I don't remember what I was going to object to a big chunk of what you just said. Anything, anything. It's immaterial. Yeah. <laughs> Material. How are you all? I am uh here. I'm, yeah, I'm here. I wouldn't define myself as great. Yeah. I'm null. I'm null. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The hellscape just feels a little more intense as we like turn the corner into the summer, you know? Like, yeah. I just think that's what it is. Well, that was up uh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm. If you I'm, want it, Gary, to come to your party, yeah. <laughs> feel free to extend Gary's hiring invitation. himself out as a clown. Uh, <laughs> just a very sad clown. The, the, sad, the saddest clown. He's going to talk about the, the end of humanity. Um, yeah. Why, why can't I? Everyone else is. They're just not <laughs> saying it, right? You know? Like, let's just. Let's just let's let's put it all together like legos and like what's actually happening is uh not the best it's not great i have i have one client who is very pleasant and always asks me like how things are and everything and i was just having a, a really like a day and i was just like really tired of the bullshit and just was like yeah i'm not doing too great but you know the world is on fire and like we're still gonna do this project so like let's get into it or like whatever it was and she was just like all right okay and i was just That's like fantastic she was just That's like fantastic. you know it's kind of refreshing and i was just like it shouldn't be refreshing to like put ointment on something that where you burned yourself yeah <laughs> refreshing Refreshing is that's, like lemonade and like <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit too glass half full <laughs> mentality from where I sit. Yeah. Um we did not get the uh the house that we put an offer on this weekend. That's oh two. man. We're oh, over two. Okay. That's fine. That's all right. Yeah. There's there's you more know, there's more houses in the sea. <laughs> I guess. Not yet, the, but there the will desert? be. Give it, give so, it a few years so and that's for sure. Yep. There is a there is a uh, in in the course of uh, this process of of looking for a house, uh, I have become aware of a Twitter account, and I believe they're on Facebook and probably other things as well, called Zillow Gone Wild. Oh. Uh, and if you do not follow yes. Zillow Gone Wild, you definitely should. Uh, and if you go scroll back i mean they have amazing things but if you scroll back through their feed a bit there's a video that they found somewhere of a house that is literally in the ocean and the ocean is coming up to the house and is knocking over the stilts that are supporting the house oh, and then the I house starts floating away a little bit yeah and sinking so uh there are houses in the sea uh, i guess you're just and you're keeping it in perspective you're like yeah. i know we're landlocked yeah <laughs> <laughs> our house will probably not be physically in the sea when i i'm curious the the area i grew up in uh the first house i remember which was actually the second house no i guess it's i guess the second house i lived in so it's both the second house i remember because i vaguely remember the first house um we were near the gulf of mexico and we were you know sea level i mean basically sea level we were uh like a half mile from the Gulf, possibly. Um, not that we had like direct access to the beach. If you went to the end of that road in half a mile, you had to cross the private property to get there. So you couldn't do that. The beach was miles away. Short story boring. Like, 
you know, whenever tropical storms blew through, we had flooding like right up to the door. Nice. Um, and I wonder now what that's like. Like, is it, is that house flood now? Well, I can offer up my perspective of someone who grew up like sea level, sea level, where it's like high tide, the waves flood the garage, <laughs> sea level. Um, and that it's not getting better. <laughs> it's getting much worse with every tide. <laughs> but I don't know. The global warming, whatever, right? There's, there's far bigger problems than global warming to worry about. There's so many problems. Oh, certainly. <laughs> I just wish we could prioritize one of them. <laughs> <laughs> just pick one. Just, just one. Just, Let's just, just one. give it her all and see what. Yeah, it's, it's not even. It's not even the, the fast, cheap, uh, and good like quadrant where you pick two. It's like just pick one. Just mm. one. <laughs> yeah. Um. We... In here's some fun news. Here's some fun news. news. This morning on my walk. I mean, it's not really news. I'm really overselling this. On my walk, I came back this morning. I'm really overselling it. Wait till I get to this. Um, <laughs> I turned the corner and like, you know, the sun was, it was up. It was seven o'clock, seven nineteen, And, uh, you know, the squirrels are, are very much uncovering everything they stored away. And so they're all over the place right now. So there was one, you know, kind of like jogging towards me down the street a little bit. And then another one ran out in the street and it was white with a black tail. And I'm like, what the hell is that animal? Um, and it was a white squirrel, which is, uh, have I told you about the white squirrels before in North Carolina? Oh, this is actually a fun story. Many moons ago, uh, up the mountain in the city of Asheville, there was a uh, traveling circus that came to that had white squirrels. Um, and they were trying to keep this like male and female white squirrel family alive and they just wouldn't breed in captivity. And so they left them, the circus left these squirrels when they went to the next town uh in the wild and these squirrels uh have now uh spread so in western parts of north carolina you see all sorts of white squirrels they're not albino mind you they're white that's startling <laughs> the first time i saw one i'm like what the hell and then i googled it and now i'm seeing more and more here and there white squirrels i guess the white is a recessive Brevard, uh, north carolina are considered yeah. rare yeah, and they are all so from Brevard. Well, let's see how far is it from Brevard. Brevard blah, blah. It's okay. We'll cut that in post. Uh, how far is it from <laughs> yeah, Brevard to uh, sure Concord? Brevard to Concord. It's like a three-hour drive. Two forty-five. Three hours the way I drive these days. They're cute. Sort of. I mean, it's a squirrel. You were saying something, Allison, before we get. Oh, I have no idea. Excellent. Probably trying to come up with a topic that wasn't doom and gloom. <laughs> but I didn't come up with it. I was going to say, how's that going? <laughs> yeah, that, that fits. That fits. <laughs> Let's do it. Do what? Just add it to the pile. The topic. I don't know. Are, I don't know. I, I, I mean. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't have a topic either. And Gary's, what do we I have do? A topic, have... topic, but it's yeah. oh neither here nor there. Well, that's fine. We can transition into that topic. <laughs> can I say it out loud? Who knows? Because I read it in a book. Oh, that's, that's the fair. best kind. That's awesome. What's the word for that? What's the <laughs> word for only having seen a word in a book and and pronouncing it wrong because you've only ever seen it in a book? Oh. That's like basically the story of my childhood reading any fantasy or sci-fi and not having anyone to talk to about mm -hmm. it. <laughs> I love, I love when my kids uh, mispronounce words that they've read. Just like, and like, like nowadays, like the words are becoming larger, bigger. Do words get larger or bigger? Longer, longer. That's what they are. <laughs> larger, bigger. Grandiose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's great. Like it, uh, it just puts a smile on my face. Well, my word is interregnum. Oh, interregnum. I swear we had this. And we in, might have. I don't know. Inter. Is that two R's? 
Two R's. Egg. Egg them. <laughs> have we? And I just forgot it. I mean, if we have, I think I've probably forgotten what it what it is. So it doesn't really. It's a. Oh, this is great. Anyway. Then I can yeah. just go back into our old archives and just be like. <laughs> <laughs> control C, Control V. I mean, I can I can confirm if we've had it. I don't think we've had this. We've had it now. It says season four. What? Well, because it already it already did the auto save, so now it's in the post list. I did a search in our post list. Well, all right. I see. We have not had it then. This is a brand new word. Yes. I mean, it's not a brand new word that we just created <laughs> brand for the new word, show. I mean, it is a brand new word. Chris knows what it means, so actually, it's just a brand new word. I don't, though. I I know that I knew what it meant at one point in time, because I know I knew I know that I came across it at some point. That's basically my story: is that I'm like, "What's this?" When I came across it, and I was like, "Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense." (laughs) Is it it, interregnum? Sounds like um, a sciencey-ish word. Um, Sounds like, but it also sounds like a little what? Sound that sounds that way, doesn't it? A little I don't think that it is. I think thing. it's a linguistic thing, but go on. Yeah, okay. Uh, sleight of hand as well. This is one of those science words where you hear it and you're like, wow, that's uh, – that would be um, the uh, – what kind of – a snail? What kind of animal is a snail? Whatever a snail is. It's an interregnum. Uh, no, but <laughs> the interregnum is, is actually like the, the, the snail trail stuff. The juice. Oh, the, the juice? interregnum <laughs> is the slime it leaves yeah. behind. Yeah. Slime! That's a better word than juice, snail juice. <laughs> we have so I, it... I should start calling myself that when I sing at nursing home. Snail, snail juice. Snail juice. We um it rains here a lot, and there are tons and tons of snails that come out with the moisture. And if you're going down our front path, it's just you have to dodge so many snails and there's little like little itty tiny baby snails. <laughs> it's just such a danger zone that I hate going down the front path because I'm like, I don't want to, I'm just like treading so carefully and trying not to hear a crunch <laughs> and like, Oh yeah. I know yeah. I, I stepped on one accidentally the other day and I burst into tears. <laughs> oh. We would have, I don't remember. It was, it was like summer, June or July. We would have there was like this um, week where grasshoppers would like reproduce like crazy, and so you would open the door, and like they liked the sidewalk, I guess, because it was warmer. But so as you walked out, it was like the sidewalk was like, it, I mean, it was like something out of sci-fi that these things like jumping out of your way, and you had to move slowly so you didn't squash them. Um, and they, I mean, they were they were big suckers too, and hundreds if of them. Snails could jump. I would probably yeah. be less sympathetic. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fair too. Um, snails. It would also be horrifying. Garden, I mean, if a snail jumped, I would be like, I'm "Like, oh. I'm moving. <laughs> I'm moving." Yeah, yeah. Um, so Chris, uh, uh, interregnum. It's a seasoning. <laughs> You can put some cardamom, put some cumin, and some interregnum goes in there too. Yeah. Um, no, interregnum. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, it is a word that you put in between things. Oh, is it like a delaying word? Um, like a sure. filler word when you write essays to make your essay longer. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sprinkle some interregnum in that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's just if you have enough. In, if you, I mean, if you put enough interregnum, there's actually a ratio. It's the interregnum to 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 the interregnum word ratio. And if and if the interregnum, if you have too many interregnums and your interregnum word ratio is too unbalanced, then basically your essay just doesn't say anything at all. It's just, becomes a, it becomes a filibuster. <laughs> yeah, it just becomes just like just mindless yammering about nothing. I, I like I like the connection to filibuster. I think that, that I think that's pretty fitting. Yes, yes, it's like a filibuster, just filling filling in space. Uh, Saturday night, Rhonda and I went on a double date with some folks. Uh, for the first time in I mean years like obviously years because of the pandemic but also years just because 
like often it was like when someone had a chance to watch the kids it was just like oh my god we just want quiet and so yeah like um, why do you you don't even want to go anywhere you're just like <laughs> we're just gonna sit in the fan turn the ac on no music air conditioner that's it um uh <laughs> the most introverted date ever is just like kids are gone you just turn all the sound off and just sit and listen to silence and just do nothing <laughs> i got the best compliment as an introvert the other day um they said being talking with you is like being by myself but better <laughs> oh and i was like Oh, that is so lovely. I don't even think they meant it as a compliment, but I was like, I'm taking it as one. That's no, nice. I think you should. I think that's one you jot down or like saving a file somewhere. That's a, that's a, that's a string of words right there. It's like that's this. hearing something like that actually, in the midst of the doom and gloom of the world. Like hearing something like that, um, the creativity and beauty in like that, that idea, and just how like easy it is to understand that description. Uh, in that in that sentence is uh, I think excites me about humans. Well, you can uh, you can bring that one out on your next introvert date. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, tell us about your double date. I don't know. I don't know that I've ever actually been on a double date. I mean, we weren't like swinging or anything like that. It was. Just, I like... realized that I was <laughs> oh, not that swinging. That's a, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> what? Well, Double date usually just means double date. If yeah. we thought you were swinging, you would have said, I've, <laughs> I've never been swinging. <laughs> um, double date, I, I guess I'm just surprised. Like, did you go to a diner or like a, like a <laughs> something? We like went, cool? yeah, we went to um, Charlotte. We went to uh, a, a restaurant that's in an old house uh, from like the late 1800s. Um, and I thought you were gonna say the late eighties for some reason. I was gonna be like, oh, no. <laughs> old house. <laughs> <In the 80s. laughs> uh, and uh, I mean, it was just like a just a uh, just a really nice experience to be. Uh, the weather was perfect. It wasn't humid. We had the option to eat outside, but uh, one of the folks we were with is a realtor, so we we're like, well, he wants to be inside because like in the beauty of the house. So we we went inside, and it was perfectly wonderful inside, and. Uh, shared wine and food and just like laughed for a few hours and i was going to relate it to something about filibuster but i forgot what it was now that was why i brought it up hmm. so we've, we've so effectively delightful, filibustered though. it was it was so good was the food it was good? like the food was great yes yes i don't even know what i mean i guess it was like spanish i don't know <laughs> I, I mean <laughs> well, it was it was like this thing. So we, we came in and you know we been, we had been chatting in the van, and I was I opted to drive um, because everyone else uh, is like out of the house frequently, and I'm like I like leave the house once a week whether I need to or not. You know, like I try to go to the grocery store to you know just otherwise like I I mean like I I walk, but I mean I don't like drive anywhere, you know. Um, and uh, I'm like I'll drive, I don't care, uh, which naturally meant like in downtown I got lost and. <laughs> a little bit and and everyone's like i'm like they're like uh do you want to still come like that's nah, fine I'll, I'll find a parking space close to the restaurant it's fine we got plenty of time like, I, I don't mind being lost we'll figure it out it's like a safe area to be lost in so who cares um yeah yeah and uh and it was it was uh uh i don't know it was just this like little like like uh I don't even know what I would call it, but like just this like space and time where it was like all the crap. Now, of course, we talked about how terrible the world is, so maybe <laughs> this doesn't apply. But like all the crap of the world did seem like external. You know, we were observers in it; we weren't living it, at least at that moment. That's nice. So, and oh, that it was break that break in the horribleness of the world. The interregnum is an interregnum. Damn! I started to say that word and thought for a second. I hope that's the right word. I hope I didn't like <laughs> twist it up in my head. <laughs> I mean, how often uh, do you say it? Oh, I, I, I doubted myself so much that I thought maybe it was like I had like added or removed a syllable as I was saying. <laughs> so I don't have it on a screen. I'm trying to think of an alternate it. way to say it. And yeah. In, in, in 
Turignum? No. Yeah. I mean, the last, like, maybe it's like a soft G, but... In, in Turignum? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. fancy. Yeah. That would do it. That would do it. I have a... Uh... I've been writing a lot of D and D rules. I've I've had to so uh, so my players finished. We were playing through this campaign, Wild Beyond the Witchlight, which takes place in in uh, the Feywild, and uh, and they finished. And then the the thing that they did after that was uh, I had introduced this big evil character monster thing that was like a sort of starter monster to kind of get the thing in but we sort of like sidetracked that because we detoured uh and they 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 beat that guy so then i was like okay i need to you know do some more prep now because it's like knock down these two these two goalposts real in quick succession and and i have a larger arc but one of those things I, i needed to do uh or one of the things i wanted to do uh was introduce a mechanic hand, to handle stress because you know the world isn't stressful enough um mm. we need to introduce it into our role-playing games but the um uh it, it's based on uh, another game called cthulhu which uh has sanity checks because it's it's cthulhu mythos and so you're seeing these you're encountering these great old ones that defy reality and and uh understanding and when you encounter anything any of these creatures or anything relating to them um it it sends you a little kind of you know off off into uh uh in sort of breaks your brain a little bit i'll say uh but obviously you know uh referencing it as a sanity check and having it as a mechanic uh, a sanity mechanic is kind of you know not super great um it's one of my sort of problems with with call of cthulhu as a system i like i like the mechanic i think the mechanic works i think the mechanic is interesting uh i just don't like what it's called so i created a system called stress uh for D, which is based on the same sort of thing so in the same way that call of cthulhu says okay you lose three points of sanity because uh, of this failure and you're now you know more susceptible to you know losing going into like a dissociative state or something um in in the stress system you gain stress you gain a point of stress uh and that will have its own repercussion so it has sort of a it has both of a, a verbal linguistic component that can be described in uh in in a session in a way that makes sense like uh naturally linguistically and also has a mechanical effect uh where it it, it applies to like how the dice are rolled and stuff um backing up to the the concept of sanity check is it mm-hmm. is uh I haven't. I've never been familiar with that uh, as a, like, related to, um, like a meter, like mm-hmm. removing sanity. So I mean, of course, that's part of gameplay. Um, but often I find that in my job, I want someone to double check my work, and the language mm-hmm. I fall into is sanity mm-hmm. check. What's what? Do you have a good alternative you use? Yes. I mean, no. <laughs> okay. But yes, the the alternative that I I have. I have basically the alternatives to saying sanity check when you're checking your work is to be specific about the type of check you need. Um, so if it is like uh, if you're trying to validate, you know, that X equals Y, yeah. then I, I need to validate X equals Y, you know, instead of instead of saying, um, can you look at this and I need to sanity check my work or whatever you say, can you look at this? Yes. I need to make sure, you know, whatever. We should probably make sure someone double checks Gary's uh, conditionals because they ask for I, extra, uh, extra eyes on things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I'm working a task right now that is um, I'm I'm taking to like the total extreme, and uh, it's just fantastic. Um, <laughs> in in course of WordPress, right, we have WP Query, and you can pass an array of arguments. Problem with passing an array is it's very easy to make typos in keys. And then suddenly, if it's not tested, you have like, oh, look at that bug that snuck through because, you know, QA are you didn't going to describe abstracting keys in such a way that the keys are passed in and they're not in their like. No, I'm going to talk but... about the builder pattern. I'm building, making a query builder. The problem with the query builder uh, is that 
So every, every key then becomes a property. So you have autocomplete in your IDE. Secondarily then, um, you just make it arrayable and then you can pass it through, um, grab all the properties and create an associative array and then array filter, drop all the null and there's your argument. However, here's where it gets crazy. I, the description on Here's .org, where it gets wild. Here's where it gets, here, buckle up. <laughs> um, and uh, so on .org, when you look at WP query, it's, it's broken into segments like author or host and page or tax query. So I've created traits for each of those. So each We've one is lost segmented. every non WordPress uh, developer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gets, <laughs> even some, even some of the WordPress people. <laughs> so I have a hundred percent at this point, I, I'm, I have a hundred percent code coverage. I have, uh, I'm throwing exceptions on invalid types because so often WordPress has like uh, type intersections, so array and string. And so I check that everything in the array is valid. Uh, and it's like, this could have been like a single file, maybe 500 lines, lots of commenting and been sufficient. But I had to take it uh, well beyond that because there's no one telling me no. Um, <laughs> and it is, uh, it's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. When I'm done, I'm gonna be like, is there a chance we can open source this? Not that uh, I think the world needs it. I was I gonna say, if you don't open like, source the beauty this. Of it is, what's that? I was gonna say, if you do not open source this, uh, I am going yeah. to complain to the man. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I will, I might try. Um, and if not, I'll, I'll just, I'll make it, I'll pop in a private repo and share it, um, but don't tell anybody. Um, <laughs> don't and, tell all of our <laughs> listeners to Binary Jazz that you put it in a private repository and you're sharing it to individual uh, individuals. It's, 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 it's very much over the top. It's over, and I realize it and that's okay. I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm actually at peace with it. And I'm, I'm, it's like a weird area of programming that I don't, we, we don't need at the moment, but whatever. That is an interregnum, a weird area of programming that we don't need. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it is. I was going to ask another question related to programming, but I think I've beaten that topic. I mean, I can I can go back to other homebrew uh, D and D rules that I've written recently, because <laughs> it's more than just the stress system. I also built a, me a mechanic over the weekend uh, for managing resources that deplete over time. Can I tell you the other dumb thing I did recently? <laughs> Since we're we're on a roll here, um, so Zoom on some computers has like these filters where you can like replace your head with an animal head, right? Does it? Um, it okay, I don't have it on this computer. On. Continue. But, yeah. I don't have this computer, but the other, but my work computer does. So I was in this call and someone popped in with that. It was like a big call with like some, I don't know, vice, whatever, big wig, big cheese or whatever. And he was answering questions from everybody in, in division department. I don't know. Like there are hundreds of people on there, many of them, but it was not, but it was still like, it wasn't a webinar. It was still like a zoom. Um, and so, oh no, this is even more so like this, like I'll have to screenshot it, but like it replaces like background and everything and you become, so I was a cow with a black hoodie and um and then somebody talked about like i don't know like don't do that basically was the request and they wrapped it in something some reason why not to do that uh so i uh bought a cow mask like you know like the, old, the horse mask i bought a cow one so the next time we had a team meeting i showed up in that cow mask and joined the meeting in that so i was not using the filter but i still got to be my cow and uh and now i'm just a cow fairly frequently uh at the moment, the cow head is on my desk uh, wearing the space helmet. Yes, <laughs> that's the cow. Uh, well, this is just endless enjoyment is what this is. So wait, right? but if I combine that, oh yeah, there we go. Do you not want to go to every meeting like this now? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> For those Why? of you that are not watching video, <laughs> uh, Allison is now a uh, raccoon in a purple shirt. Chris is a panda, nope, a fox in a blue hoodie uh, with the Aurora Borealis behind him. Um, and the computer that I'm on won't let me do that. Maybe I need to update Zoom. That's probably what it is. You probably need to update Zoom. Yeah. yeah. But That's it's fun. so great because it blinks and like facial expressions and I fully embody <laughs> a cow when I'm on these calls. Yep. I also feel bad because everybody can still tell I'm yawning because the call is boring. That's the best part. Like I'm sitting there and it looks like suddenly the cow is yawning. So it's, it's, 
It's uh, that's it. That's that's the bone you get. The world has thrown us a bone, and it is being virtual animals on Zoom while the world. I'll take it. Animals. <clears throat> should we find out what the word is? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think we should probably find out what the word is. Um, it is a period of discontinuity or a gap in government organization or a social order. Oh, Christ, that's unsettling. <laughs> so in Latin, it means between rain. Between rain? <sighs> like R E. Yeah. I oh, between rain. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeesh. Yeesh. I, uh, <clears throat> we have I'm questions. Scheduled. Oh, go ahead. all right. Go well, let's do no, questions. Go ahead. go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say I'm scheduled to go to Florida on Thursday. Oh. With the kids. Uh, and I've transitioned from like in the last few months from like, oh, it'll be nice to go back to the old stomping grounds. Grounds? You know what I mean. Grounds. To like, I just don't, I don't want to. But that's Florida. It didn't use. Uh, maybe it did. I. It didn't it used, used to be. To be. It, it didn't to be. used to be. It no, did, it didn't sure used to it be. Did. It did. I you did. To, no. You just lived there. No. Um. Okay. So, uh, first of all, uh, I got an email. We got an email recently. Uh, from uh, Michael Stevenson. Ah. Uh. And uh, this says hi. Can Michael I write Stevenson? an article for your website bit for business leaders and managers? No. What business leader and manager is coming to our website? I mean, that I was mean, my somebody I would work They're not website. leading very well. Yeah. Uh, it would be on top strategies for imp improving interdepartmental communication and collaboration. <laughs> I'll cover common failure points and strategies for problem improvement. Problem that is for us. If you think an article on this topic would be of interest to your site visitors, please let me know. Thank you for your consideration. So, yeah. yes, you... You heard the answer, Michael. Uh, we only respond in video form. Uh, the answer. The is Allison no. department wants to talk more to the, to the Gary and Chris department. Yeah, yeah. Inter interdepartmental communication. Are there Allison questions? Yes. Oh. Yes, I was. I can't remember if I actually submitted any. Um, a little bit of a while. Yes. So. Um, We'll go, yeah, there's two. Uh, I have an answer to one, so we're going to do that one. <laughs> um, I'm not sure about the other one. Uh, it Did is... you just swap into a cow on the fly? <laughs> a cow on the fly. It, it wasn't exactly on the fly. It took a few minutes, yeah. but yes, I did just swap into a flow. Plow? A flow. A cow. <laughs> <laughs> what sensation or sense brings you right back to another memory? almost another time and place and feeling what is oh that? what is that memory or experience oh spike it we're going to finish the show with this topic go ahead chris uh yes so um i my answer to that question is the entire album by underworld dub no bass with my headman uh and what this album does to my brain is i associate it with uh so there was i think it was spring break after aaron and i first got together uh we were i think at that point pretty much officially done with our other relationships we had like severed ties things were like a little bit like we were we were done uh and i went home uh and it was the first time that i had been home in the Bay Area without uh, my ex. Uh, and I was doing, um, I was doing a, at the time I, I had just finished um, uh, Impact Personal Safety in Southern California, uh, men's class. And I was taking a, a men's class in the Bay Area, Bay Area Model Modeling, which is the same program, just a different name, uh, and doing class there over the break. And she, uh, Aaron, drove out to meet me uh at some point uh, i think actually uh, it was her ex who drove out and dropped her off somewhere uh and then he went off to stay in a commune or something for a week 
uh and we just hung out for you know a week and so that album we went to, we, and i you know drove around san francisco and we went all these places we went up to hate ashbury and went to amoeba records where i found that album and uh i have like i listened to that album now and i have like this this feeling of of where we were at that time as our relationship was like really kind of getting more serious and um just driving through san francisco um with that sort of sort of yeah sensation and 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 like the beginnings of things um yeah thanks. that is mine mm. thanks for sharing that i also love that it's a whole album i feel mm -hmm. like that's such a like yeah it's not it's not just the one song yeah i like that it's like an open to end album like that's mm -hmm. nice yeah because Carrie, it was just take it, was it away just like, we were just listening to it on on sort of repeat and so like i can't i can't it's not a single song it's like the whole thing anything <laughs> is gonna anything is gonna take me back there yeah um i in high school was in marching band um and uh it was like one of the first like big things i did in my life was like you know being in marching band like at the, i mean prior to that i'd been young but you know um we we did this like this band competition, which is so fantastically nerdy. Um, but we, like, as a band that had never participated, we were the first band on. So at like eight o'clock in the morning, um, we were the first band. And it was in the um, old uh, stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, like the, so the Georgia Dome. And uh, so our warm up time, I guess, was like two hours before or three hours before or something. So we had to be at the Georgia Dome at six in the morning or something like that. And um, the buses, of course, had to drive and drop us off. So the smell of diesel is different in different temperatures, you know, like, but like in the low seventies, there's the way diesel just, I don't mean like, I mean, like from like the diesel exhaust, like I don't mean like snorting diesel or something, <laughs> but like, um, that feeling of like being part of something bigger, mm. um, just kind of, uh, floods in my body whenever I catch a whiff of like diesel at that temperature, diesel exhaust at that temperature. And it uh, is just like this, like reminder that seems to pop up from time to time that it's uh, it's always about us. Like there's an us that I need to pay attention to, you know? Hmm. Um, and uh, I don't know, that's, a, that's one I, I actually like wouldn't mind bumping into in the next few days, It'd make me feel better. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.